Don't miss a beat, join the notification squad by clicking that bell, you'll get notified every time I upload a video, and be sure to join our Discord to talk and get help with your code. Hello everyone, my name is Bastion and welcome back to a brand new feed on the Source Code channel. This is episode 4 of the Feud.js tutorial series. And in this tutorial we're going to make a service list where people can select uh, a couple of services and they can see the total price of the services combined. So what we want to do is we want to make a uh, list of items. So we're going to make an unordered list and we're going to put service item inside of that. So we're going to have an unordered list with service items. And we need to make a service item for that, our own component. So we can say view.component service item. And then give it a object. And our service item needs to have a service. And each service has a name and a price. So we know what the name of the service is and what the price tag for that service is. So we're going to say props and then a service. So each service item has its own service. And then we're going to provide it with a template. And that is going to be a list item with the content of service.name and then a span with surface.price. And that span is so we can change the styling of the price separately. So we already have a template and when we run this, it will put this stuff inside of it. So now we need to make our data, which has a list of services. So we go to say services, and it is an array of objects and each object needs to have an id a name and we're going to provide a website and the price of making a website is 15 dollars and um that is the first item then second item is going to have an id of one and we're going to make a backend. And the price is $20. And then finally, we're going to do some mobile development. And the price is uh, $5. So we have three services that we offer and they all have an ID a name and a price. So now we want to uh, create a list right here on the screen for each service. So what we can say is v4 each surface in services. We are going to v bind surface as surface. And what that's going to do, service is going to be each surface out of the surfaces uh, array and we're going to bind the surface as surface to the component so that we can use it inside of here then we want to bind the key as surface dot id which is going to be the ids of each surface and that is already going to be it so we go to the web page, we can see website 15, backend 20, and mobile dev 5. But we don't want to see that website is 15, backend is 20, mobile dev is 5. We want to know a price. We want it to be clear that this is dollars and not just a random number. So Vue has filters that we can apply. And it's a really easy way of modifying data before it gets put into the HTML. So what we can do is we can create a filter, which is going to be currency. And then we will get a value. And what we want to do is we want to return a dollar and then 
property value instead. And this might look a bit confusing, but it will make sense. So what we can do here after service.price, we can put currency like this. And what it will do is whenever it tries to render this part, it'll see a service.price. Okay. Oh, I want it to filter as a currency. So it'll look, do I have a filter for currency? Yes, I do. It'll provide the value. So it will get service.price provides it and we return the same price but with a dollar in front of it so when we go to the web page we will see straight away it'll show as website $15 backend $20 mobile dev $5 so that is an easy way of uh, filtering it so we can provide stuff and I just noticed that right here we need to close the list tag so that everything works properly so that is already how you can make a list item. Now what I want to do next is I want it to be toggleable. So we can select each item and it will show that we have selected that one item. So I'm going to add a style tag at the bottom. It can be anywhere inside of the HTML. And I'm going to say for a class of active, the background color will be light gray and this won't do anything yet because we don't apply the active class to any elements but what we can say here inside of the list element we can say v dash on click we want to toggle active so when we click on it we want to toggle if the element is active or not active and we want to bind a new thing which is going to be a class and it will be an object inside of the string and we're going to say active is going to be service.active and this will basically say we have a class and when uh, uh, service.active is true we apply the class active when it's false, we don't apply the class active. So that's an easy way of making it toggleable and turn it on, turn it off. So what we want to do now is we want to add a method for the toggle active call that we make. So we say methods and then put toggle active. Then a function and we want to add a new thing to each service and that is active so we're going to say active is false and each one is disabled by default what we can do is we can for instance say that the first item should be active by default but i'm going to turn that off because i don't want that so when we are in toggle active we want to say this dot surface surface dot active equals not this.service.active and that just flips the boolean over so service has an active property and when we call toggle active it will get service and then active it will put to true if it's false and put to false if it's true so when we go back we can see that when we click it it will actually already work and that is because whenever we click it, it'll change active to true or false. And then it will check if they should add the class or remove it. And in case that's true, it will flip it. So you can see that we can select each element. Now, if I put this to true, you'll see that that is already selected by default and we can still toggle it. So next up, I want to make a total price below this so we can see the total price of each item that we have selected and for that we can use computed properties so underneath the unordered list I'm going to put a p tag with total price it's going to be total price and I want this to be currency as well so we can just apply the filter currency and it will put a dollar in front of it so now below this, I want to 
add a computed property, which is basically a property that is rendered each time it changes. And we don't have to call a method for it, it's just a single property. And the usefulness of this is that it is fast and it caches, which means that when things change, but it doesn't update, it won't do anything. So what we can say is we can say computed, then put an object and we can put total price equal to view. And then this is basically an error function and view will be passed alongside, uh, will be passed to that function, which is basically the app instance, which holds the services. So we can, you can also use a function and then use this, but this is just a single way of one lining it. So view dot services dot, and I want to filter each service that is not active. So service and the service should be active. And then we're going to count each item, uh, all the item prices together. So a plus b dot price, and we want to start at zero. And if you don't understand, uh, what this does filter and reduce, you can just Google around. Um, it's not too complicated, but filter basically just says for each surface, if it is true, if the function evaluates to true, I keep it. If not, I'll throw it away and then reduce basically gives you a and B and a is the starting value, which in this case we provide zero and B is each object. So a zero plus the first object dot price will be 15 and then B will be fifth. A will be 15 the second time plus B dot price, which is 20 and then so forth. And when we do this, we can go to the web page and we can see that total price is at zero. And that is because I haven't selected anything. So when I click $5 or mobile dev, it'll show $5 because mobile dev is $5. If I click backend, it'll show $25. If I click website, it'll show $40. Then if I remove any one of those, it'll immediately update. So that is already going to be it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, be sure to drop a like. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. And I will see you in the next episode.